In this section, we're going to look at an excellent hedging opportunity that we looked at earlier in the year, but it looked like it had passed because of the actions of GameStop. But since then, things have settled down and it's now come back and actually looks more attractive than it did a few weeks ago. Now, before we get there, I think we need to look at this incredibly rarefied equity market that we're in at the moment and some of the, the historical um, activity that we're seeing behind the market. Now, first of all, in the options market, you've probably seen that volumes have gone to record highs. If we look at the options clearing core, their total volumes in the US recently hit a one day volume of 50 million. Um, the average for this year is around about 40 million. And until last year, the average was about 20 million. So we double the volumes that we'd seen over previous years for most of the last decade, in fact. Now, what's more impressive about all of this is that it's a type of players that are behind it. Specifically, and as we know, there's a lot of retail out there. We know this because retail are playing in smaller sizes, so under 100 lots. So the number of 100 lot trades going through the market is very, very high. And the number of these as a percent of the New York Stock Exchange total equity volume is at a record level. And when we look at calls, so buying the upside versus puts, and this is calls to open as a buy. So this is individuals saying, I'm gonna buy a call option on a stock. These are also at record levels. So people are buying the upside rather than buying protection. So this is all about playing the upside in the market. And we're seeing this with a backdrop where the underlying equity market itself is also seeing some extremes. And GameStop was one example. But when we look at this chart of, of the US most shorted stocks, this is Refinitiv's chart of most shorted stocks, you can see that the most shorted stocks, so those that most people think are going to underperform, has significantly outperformed the S&P. And that has particularly been aggressive over the last six months. So the, the least quality, the lowest quality stocks are outperforming. And this is really quite bad for capital because capital, instead of going into the highest quality names, is going into the lowest quality names. At the same time, we've also seen a record short interest on the S&P. We recently got to the same levels that were seen at the peak of the dot-com bubble in 2000. And at the same time, according to Sentiment Trader, we're seeing record low levels of cash sitting with mutual funds. So these are the funds that normally sit there holding cash that would buy dips. So if you've got a record low short interest, if you've got a record low in cash sitting at mutual funds, if you've got a lot of the short players who've been squeezed out of the market, then if we do get a rollover in the market, there are far fewer buyers out there to buy that downside. So the dip buying mentality is reduced by the very nature of this setup. Now, the reason why this is interesting is that Prior to GameStop, I talked about the March expiry, March the 19th. And this was a great opportunity because as we've seen on previous occasions last year, into these quarterly expiries, we've often seen a spike in volatility. We got one in March last year, then in June, and then in September. We didn't get one in December. But then GameStop happened and it looked like we'd started to have the spike already. But since then, volatility has had that little peak and rolled over. And what we've seen is that the VIX, for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, on a closing basis has gone below 20. So the lowest level on a closing basis for nearly a year. And this is having been to that spike of sort of mid thirties only a few weeks ago. But also what we can look at is a comparison of the front month in volatility versus a later month. So this is that sort of sense of, of is the front month showing at the front month, are they low and therefore cheap relative to what the longer dated part of the market is pricing. So on this, this view here, we're looking at the second month VIX future versus the six month VIX future. And we can see here that that spread has reached the lowest level in the last 12 months and is pretty much at the lows of the last three years. This means that at the front end, you are seeing low levels of volatility. So it's worth looking at buying some hedges. And this is even more extreme when we look at the front month, the first month versus that six month. Now, the reason why I haven't led with this is the, the front month is about to expire. So there is some impact of expiry on that, but we can see an extreme move. Front end volatility is cheap, but the back end is still worrying about risk. What we're talking about here is not necessarily a peak in the market, but what we are looking at is the potential for volatility to pick up as we head towards that March 19th uh, quarterly expiry. Remember market makers who've been selling these options to those retail investors, their short volatility, their short gamma as we get closer to expiry. If the market continues to move up, that will put more upward pressure on prices. But then if it rolls over, the same impact on the downside. So we should expect gyrations in the market to pick up as we head towards the middle of March. So there's two ways you can look at that. One is you could buy protection, so buying puts, 
Or if you've still got a bullish disposition, you could switch out of, of your long positions in the equity market and buy some calls. Now, really, we're looking at calls at the index level, not at the single stock level, because single stock volatility is quite rarefied because of what's been going on in things like GameStop. But certainly, it looks like index level volatility in those front months is relatively good value on a historical basis versus the back end of the market. And now would be a good time to potentially reduce risk by either buying some protection or rolling out long positions, buying calls, keep skin in the game. But if the market rolls over, then all you'll lose is your premium and you're sitting on some cash to buy those dips. I that's your, your, um, your powder that you keep dry for a rainy day. And thanks for tuning in once again. And we look forward to seeing you next week where we'll be tackling more of the biggest themes in the market.